Everyone, this is Three Questions with Sean Carey. <laughs> Told you I got sounds, man. <laughs> I got everything. I got everything on this. Hey, can I, I actually didn't even ask you, is it, is it Sean Carey? Is it Dr. Carey? Like, what, you, what, you, you know what? You're, you're a fan. You're, you can call me whatever you want to call me. Stop, stop. Um, no, okay, well, I, I, I just, go by Sean. I just you, go by Sean. You do go by Sean. And yeah. Sean is actually like, I, I connect with Sean over the summer. He is like the chillest superintendent, uh, just super cool. And I actually, he, I know this is good. I don't know if this is a compliment. Your staff seems to love you, which is not always the case with superintendents, right? They were like really appreciative of you. And I, I, I just loved it. And you were just awesome to talk to. So it was great to just kind of ha to have you on the podcast. So, uh, thanks. Thanks for taking the time out of your day. Like, I really appreciate it. Well, it is. It's my pleasure, George. And, and honestly, I think you're being way too kind to me. Um, no, I, I see a lot of superintendents. <laughs> no, oh, come on. You, you've got to know that uh, superintendents are, you know, the, the, the staff, they're the number one fans. So um, that's, well, you are, that's you are, to. you are, you are pretty new to the district. That's probably why. <laughs> Give it a couple of years. We'll see. Right. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I would say that. We'll see if you're clapping in five years. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Right. So, Hey, Sean, Sean, thanks for being on the podcast. And we talked about, we're going to do the, the three questions. And uh, the first question, I know uh, when I saw you speak and I saw you connect with your staff, uh, just totally inspiring. And I, it, your staff was really moved. And there's so many connections to, you know, a lot of stuff I talk about innovators mindset, what you're doing uh, in your school district. So when you think about your own uh, education experience, who's like a teacher that inspired you and why? Well, well, I would tell you, George, the, the list is long. Um, but I can, you know, I, I think back to my first experience, um, you know, I'm a I'm a, actually, I'm a military kid. I don't know if I shared that with you before. Oh, you did. You did. You said you moved all over. Yeah, moved, moved around quite a bit. But uh, my first experience with the teacher that had the, the biggest impact on me was in fifth grade. And um, it was my, um, it was actually um, uh, my first, no, no, my second, I'm sorry, my second male teacher in elementary school. His name was Chris Luther. And um, just a just an incredible guy, um, kind of a short, wiry guy. Mm -hmm. This was a second, um, a second career for him. He was in the military for a long time. And sometimes I, it's, it's kind of weird how that kind of thing would work out where you're in the military and then you right. go to the school that they almost seem like they shouldn't fit together. <laughs> um, but it really, it really worked for this guy because he was, he was just one of those guys who, um, had really mastered the art of making connections with people. Um, and I know just given the amount of time that he had spent in the military, I mean, he was, uh, he was a leader of young men mm -hmm. uh, or young, young people in, um, coming into the military. So I think that that was a, that was a great connection for him in terms of becoming an educator. Um, and then specifically, um, a great kind of, uh, platform for him, or maybe a way for him to become a leader of young boys in in elementary school um you know i wasn't the only one who thought that he was uh just this really cool guy um he was the he was the kind of teacher that you could talk to about anything mm -hmm. he would answer any question you could ask you you could ask the questions that probably you shouldn't ask teachers and right. he'd answer and it was matter of fact and and it was uh straight to the point but also he was the kind of guy that would could just make you laugh about lots of different things mm -hmm. Um, the thing I remember the most about him was um, he was um, the leader of our fifth grade camp. And I just remember him telling these stories around. This was back when you could actually have fire um, mm -hmm. on on a, on a school campus. Um, so we had a campfire on, on the school campus <laughs> where we actually uh, we camped. Right. Um, and he told these stories around the campfire that were just incredible. Um, and that's where I kind of um, adopted kind of my storytelling, too, when I became a uh, when I became a teacher um, was just uh, by remembering some of the stories he told and how, how just kind of mesmerized and, and um, drawn in I was by just the way that he told stories. And again, the way that he connected with uh, the people that were around him. Sorry. What, what was his name again? His name is Chris Luther. And Chris, Chris Luther, is he, do, do you know if he's around still? Like, so, so that's a great question. So here's the thing. Um, the school that I went to, um, um, I was there for a year yeah. um, and then moved on to middle school. 
um, went all the way through my my educational career, um, staying in the same kind of area. Mm -hmm. um, graduated from college, and then my first job was back in the school. Really, I was a student with Mr. Luther, and he was still there. That's um, awesome. And one of uh, you know, and and granted, um, lots of years had passed since uh, yes. since I was a fifth grader there. Um, and so I'm not really sure whether or not uh, Mr. Luther is still around. And notice I'm saying Mr. Luther. That's it took me it took me all of a year right. to get beyond um, right totally place where I could say yes, as opposed to uh, Mr. Luther. So I don't know if uh, Chris Luther is still around, but um, well, here here's a special thing, Chris Luther. If you're listening, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> I knew you'd appreciate that. Actually, it's funny because. Uh, I, have you ever seen? Okay, have you ever seen the movie Major Pain? Have you ever seen that movie? Oh, I love my, one of my favorites. <laughs> so Major Pain, I love that movie as a kid. I, I can't remember as a kid, but I actually when I taught, so the first thing I thought like, okay, so you got military teacher. Uh -huh. So I would teach phys ed when I taught grade four, and I would uh, I would have days where it was drill, drill sergeant C, right? And I would just yell at the kids and call them little pukes, and they would like. <laughs> They would beg for it, right? They thought it was like the funny because they knew it was like a joke and things like that. And I'm like, I was kind of listening to that. I'm like, oh, can I get away with that today? Like, you know, I'm not teaching now, so like, what, what can you do? But the, <laughs> the reality of it, I used to, I used to do that with students, and they're like, drill sergeant C, drill sergeant C, and like it was just all kind of in fun. And it's like, and it was like totally inspired by Major Pain because like Major Pain's do with that little kids, right? Oh, I don't know if you remember I the pinky, the pinky. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix the pinky thing, right? So. I love that. So, okay. So you are a superintendent, totally inspiring. I saw, saw you connect with so many people and obviously, uh, you know, Mr. Luther's influence, you know, the way you told stories, I can tell that there's obviously a connection there in the way that you do that today. So when you think of all the administrators you connect with, whether it's a student, whether it's a colleague, um, who's someone that sticks out to you and why? Oh gosh. Um, well, again, I guess the list could be the list could be really mm. long, um, but just thinking about um, thinking about oh gosh, what's happened to me within the last? I've, believe it or not, I'm not as young as I look, um, <laughs> but um, um, you know, I, I think about what's happened over the course of the last maybe 15, 20 years, and mm. I think about some of the leaders that I've had the opportunity to learn from. Mm -hmm. And again, oh, gosh, I, I never really made this connection, but it's the um, their ability to be great storytellers mm -hmm. or at the very least be able to tap into the things that um, actually resonate most with people. And I believe it really is storytelling and storytelling has um, an element of relationship building to it um, because you have to, in order for people to really be interested in the story that you're telling, they have to be able to relate to it. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to, to, to see something about themselves or something about their experience in that story that's being told to them. And so um, I think of I think of uh, the the administrator that actually led me down the the administrative path. His name is Gary Benson, and yes, I know Gary Benson is still alive and, and around. Um, but um, he's just a great storyteller from um, telling me stories about uh, you know. So I was a track I, I ran track when I was in um, high school. Um, he talked to me about his experiences also running track uh, when he was. Uh, um, in high school and also in college. Mm -hmm. And um, just the stories that he told um, and the stories that actually had some practical application to, you know, being an educator in a, in a classroom. Um, you know, when kids understand that you're, you're, you're a person just like them, mm -hmm. um, you know, because there's this mystique that kind of goes along with being an educator is that um, kids seem to think that uh, for some reason or another, you, you live at school, um, right. you get dressed at school. You don't look like anything other than what you look like at school. Right. Um, but when you tell them stories about um, something that, that doesn't have anything to do with school, then that's when they really start to right. oh, kind of connect with you. Absolutely. And so he did a great job of just kind of teaching me how to do that with students, um, how to do how, how to do that in a way with um, with the staff that I work with, too. Um, because again, it's a, it's an opportunity for a student of a different kind. So the staff, mm -hmm. staff as student to learn from the stories that you tell to them. Um, and he was, he was pretty masterful at that. He was, he was able to do that in a way that a lot of people that I've uh, been around just haven't been able to be able uh, to do. 
Well, this is this is here we go, Gary Benson. Shout out. So, just love that. You, I tell you, everybody wants one of these machines after. I, yeah, I got to get one now. <laughs> it actually, like I remember when I, when I uh, joined your district uh, to speak to them, I talked about the importance of storytelling, and you you talked about that as well. And I think the point that you made is so important. And what you're saying is that I'm not trying to be the hero of the story I'm telling. I'm trying to get you to see how you are that hero. How you, and that and that means you have to connect in a way that people see themselves in that space, right? And that, I think that's where that connects, right? And people really appreciate that. You are like you set me up so well that day. It was it was awesome, right? And it was because we both were telling stories, and that people can see that that connection. The 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 comment about how kids. Uh, you know, see you kind of just as an educator. Like that's something I remember uh, when I was a principal, I was at a grocery store and a kid was there. He's like, Mr. Kroos, what are you doing? I'm like, <laughs> like buying groceries. Yeah. What are you doing here? And he's like, what? And we like talked for five minutes. And so that same kid, it was, this is like a Friday. So Monday morning, that kid was outside the school 10 minutes before it opened. And I, I got there and he's like, he was waiting for me. He's like, Mr. Kroos, I saw you at the grocery store. I'm like, <laughs> I was there. Yeah, I remember, I, 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 I was like, there. Yeah. Right? And he was just so like thrown off, right? And you just know, like he like went to his friends, like, oh, Mr. Crow's at the grocery store, like you know, just kind of a, a weird thing, right? And you feel, and it's the same, and it's the exact same thing that you said about your other teacher, right? It's hard to call. You kind of see them in that position. You don't want to call them by their first name, and, and you know, you kind of just see them as that teacher, right? But we have that that same complex ourselves as even when we grow up as adults. So, Sean, last last question for you. Uh, I know that you're doing great things. Your district is doing incredible things. But I guarantee you, just like every person, you go if you can go back to your first year of teaching, there's things that you say like, oh, I can't believe I used to do that, right? Probably the major pain story for me is probably one of those stories I told out loud that maybe I shouldn't have. But anyways, if you look back at, if you look back at your uh, first year of teaching, like what advice would you give to yourself? Wow, first year teaching. Um, yeah, that was that was quite a show. Um, um, and probably not a good show. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, you know what? If I were to give myself uh, some advice as a as a starting teacher, one of the things I would say is um, don't take yourself too seriously. Mm. Um, and I, I think that's one of the things that uh, we do, especially when we start off in, in the profession, is um, that we feel like we've got to be this person who knows everything and can do everything and, and um, you know, any question that's asked by a student, we should have the answer for, or at least we should be able to point them in the right direction. And usually it's more of, of, of the, of the former, which is have the right. right, answer. right. Um, um, and, you know, we, we don't open ourselves up to just kind of being human and, and showing students that we are, we are human. We make mistakes. We don't know everything. We, we're growing and we're learning every day, just like they're supposed to be growing and learning every day. And so I, that's where that whole taking yourself way too seriously comes from. Um, and I think in my, in my first, I'd say first couple of years of teaching, that's probably one of the things that I, I did that I, if I could do all over again, I would, I would definitely change and take myself so seriously. Um, you know, um, I do a lot of laughing at myself now. Mm -hmm. Um, and quite frankly, I, you know, I encourage that with my staff, you know, yes, I'm the leader of a school district, but guess what? I'm just as goofy as everybody else. I make just as many mistakes as everybody else. Um, I say just as many stupid things as everybody else. Um, and you can call me on it. Um, yeah. um because guess what? I'm going to call you on it too. And that's how we're going to build relationship with one another can't take you, we can't tell, take ourselves too seriously because then it doesn't help us be the authentic self that we need to be for kids to truly get something from us. And that, that actually like, you know, talking to you, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do the podcast with you is because you're just, it was so easy to connect with you that day. We had talked for a while. Like we were actually, Oh yeah, we, we have to kind of go on with this event. I remember that kind of specifically. Um, but it is that nature just where you can joke at yourself because I think sometimes when like, I, like sometimes when I'm, you know, at events, I'm like, oh, like, can I, can I crack a joke here? It's going to make everyone feel better. But like, and I knew like, I actually made a little joke about, you know, how superintendents are just taking three hour breaks kind of thing. Yeah. Right. And you, and you were like, you were dying. I remember watching you laugh because I kind of looked over. I'm like, okay, am I going to be in trouble? So, but, you, and that, that actually does connect you to people. And the, the thing that I appreciate about you saying this specifically is because you are a superintendent, right? Like you have, you have moved. And I think 
I think for me, I know this about you. I know you don't take yourself too seriously, but I know you take your work very seriously. And those are still, those are different things. Right. And it's Mm kind of like, yeah, we should, this is a joy, like enjoyable place. We get to work with kids. Like how awesome is that? Right. Like you just kind of having fun, like where I could do, you know, as I said earlier, where I could do major pain and they think it's the greatest (laughs) thing ever because they, they know it's a joke. So Sean, that was awesome. I got to give it, I got, I got everything. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Dr. Sean Carey, I, you're actually going to see his information. Make sure you connect with him below. He's an incredible superintendent, incredible leader, easygoing guy. So, so, so yeah, so I, I, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you connect with Sean uh, in the future. And thank you for taking the time to listen. See? We got a machine, man. Thanks, everybody.